This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com slash TYT. Go. Herman Cain is a guy who uh, was at one point one of the owners of Godfather's Pizza. He now does a talk show. He's got a lot of hype on the conservative side. Um, he did pretty well in one of the uh, crazy Tea Party polls. And, uh, and, you know, everybody's excited about him. Because he's a real conservative. He doesn't compromise. Well, nah, I guess that's somewhat true. Uh, he was doing an interview with Christianity Today. Uh, they'd asked him about, hey, you remember one time you were getting, uh, you had a doctor by the uh, name of Abdallah and that that concerned you? Um, and, you know, how did you allay that concern? You know, they're referring to an old story. And in that old story, he said, that he was relieved when he, once he found out that he was a Lebanese Christian, of course. Because if he was a Lebanese Muslim, well, then obviously he can't be a good doctor. By the way, uh, perhaps the most famous doctor in the country right now, Dr. Oz, is Turkish. I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. But of course, Herman Cain wouldn't want him uh, operating on him. Uh, by the way, Dr. Oz uh, operated on my uncle and did a great job, and he's alive today, thanks to Dr. Oz. But of course, if he was a Christian, I'm sure it would have come out much better. Anyway. Uh, when uh, asked about Muslims in America, he got a little bit more specific. He says, first of all, look, I, I will allow them to practice their religion freely. Oh, well, are you not merciful? Well, thank you very much. But he adds, quote, the role of Muslims in America is not to convert the rest of us to the Muslim religion. That I resent. And so I push back and reject them trying to convert the rest of us. And based upon the little knowledge that I have of the Muslim religion, you know, they have an objective to convert all infidels or kill them. Well, one part of that quote is accurate. You have very little knowledge of the Muslim faith. Look, it's amazing because he must not know any Muslims. I mean, obviously he doesn't. He got freaked out by the name Abdallah uh, of his doctor. And it, I, since I grew up in a Muslim family, I happen to know a lot of Muslims. And first of all, none of them give a damn about converting Herman Cain, let alone killing him. I have... Look, are there Muslims in the world that want to either convert or kill people? Yes. Are there Christians in the world who feel the same way? Yes, right? Now, you can argue that in the Middle East there are more Muslims in that category. Okay. But if you think that's all Muslims, you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. The Muslims here in America have no interest in killing you or or most of them in converting you. You know who wants to convert you? Christians. They do it all the time. They send missionaries all over the world. And if you've ever been to got hoodwinked by a pretty girl into a Bible study class and then got thumped over the head with a Bible, you know about people trying to convert you. You know that's the oldest trick in the book in college. Like, oh, we have this great thing. You want to get together for like dinner or something? And the guy's like, oh, Satan, what's going on? Is God Jinx inviting me to dinner or something? And then you come in and they're like, oh, Satan with a Bible. You're like, oh, what happened? Turns out they're Bible thumpers trying to convert you. Now, luckily, they're not going to kill you or anything. <laughs> but I'm not like Herman Cain, who believes idiotically that the entire religion is uh, based on that, right? So, look, if a guy like this got into power, which he luckily won't, how scary would that be? What, what an incredibly perverted way of thinking of a, about a religion with over a billion people in the world. All right, by the way, to give you a sense of how perverted uh, uh, you know, Herman Cain's way of thinking is on a lot of issues... Uh, Matt Lewis interviewed him for um, The Daily Caller, and when he asked him about an old anecdote about his uh, mother warning him not to drink from uh, the water fountains reserved for whites back in the days of segregation, they, she said, make sure you drink from the uh, water fountain for African Americans. He said, quote, we looked at each other and said, the water tastes the same. What's the big deal? Oh, come on, Herman. Jeez, I'm Lord mercy. Now, Matt Lewis comes in and says, no, 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 it's just that Cain wanted to express the absurdity of segregation. That's not what that quote says. That quote clearly says, oh, what's the big deal? We don't get to drink from the White Fountain. We're fine. We know our place. It's, gee, I wonder why the conservatives like him. Huh? I don't know. I'm going to have to put some thought behind that. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks. They've got 75,000 different titles. A book I've always meant to read but didn't have time for is Guns, Germs, and Steel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to it through Audible.com. Actually, if you're a Young Turks listener, you get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com. 
www.thetalkingalternative.com/tyt.